Hi, welcome to this video on advanced index rules. In this video, we're going to take a look at numbers raised to a negative number or um, numbers involving uh, a negative index. We're also going to take a look at fractional indices and uh, we're going to see what the rules are relating to those and also why they exist. So, uh, if I were to have a look at my first, my first of, these, of these rules, and that's numbers raised to a negative power. Now, if you haven't watched my previous video, I want you to stop this video and have a look at my basic index rules video, because that covers uh, the basic rules of indices, which I'm going to just assume that you know. So, I'm going to assume you know that, um, and so please uh, pause and have a look at that video. <clears throat> so, let's take a look at this. Now, I want to set up a situation using my previous um, rules. So, let's say that I had, um, this is going to go 3 squared, that's going to give me 9. 3 cubed, that's going to give me 27, 3 to the power of 3, and I, and I can carry on going. But if I want to go down, now 3 to the power of 1, if I'm getting down in this sequence, anything to the power of 1 is simply itself. 3 to the 0 is 1, which I've covered. Now at this point, I want to just ask us, what are we actually doing each time? Well, we're dividing by 3 to get down each time. Dividing by 3 to get to a lower level. So I'm going to continue doing that, surely. My pattern is to divide by 3. That's my term-to-term -term rule, if you will. And if I continue this pattern, that's going to be 3 to the minus 1. 3 to the minus 2. Okay? So 3 to the minus 1. If I have 1 divided by 3, and I'm just going to write it as a fraction. That's 1 over 3. Divide again by 3. Well, 1 over 3 divided by 3 is 1 over 9. And I can continue 3 to the minus 3 is going to be 1 over 27. If I continue my dividing by 3 rule. Okay, so if we look at that, um, and consider the fact of this, because I've got, over here I've got 9. So 9 is actually 3 squared, so I could, instead of 9, I could write 3 squared. And instead of 27, I could write 3 to the power of 3. So all that I've actually done is, where I had 3 to the power of 3 gave me 27, 3 to the power of negative 3 is simply 1 over 27, or 1 over 3 to the power of 3. 3 to the power of 2, or negative 2, sorry, is simply 3 squared over 1. This over 1 we actually call the reciprocal. So when I refer to this negative here, that negative simply means the reciprocal. In other words, flipped over. Right, so if I have some actual examples here, let's say I had um, 9 uh, to the negative 2, or well, that's simply 1 over 9 squared, which is 1 over 81. Um, <clears throat> and I can, I can do it with algebra. If I had um, j to the power of negative 5, well, that's simply 1 over j to the power of 5. Now these rarely come by themselves. Uh, they're usually embedded within some of these questions, but it's important that we understand these first. Alright, so <clears throat> let's have a look at our next two rules. By the way, please feel free to pause the video at any time and copy down what I've put on the board uh, if you think it'll be good for your memory. Um, that's what the videos are designed for. Uh, right, so let's have a look at these. These two you're just going to have to remember. I'm not going to go into the reasons why um, a, a squared is equal to a to the half or a cubed is equal to a to the power of the third. You just need to remember that. And we're going to use these two rules here. And by the way, uh, when we say a square root, there's actually a little invisible two there. Okay, We just don't write it in maths because... Well, it's the same as we don't write 1 in front of a, because there's 1a. I'm square rooting it, you know, there's nothing less than a square root. Uh, so we're at least at this stage, so it's not, we're not going to do that. Uh, Alright, so you just need to remember these. Oh, in fact, I'll star them here. You just need to remember them. That's the only thing I'm actually really asking you to just stereo remember without, without giving you an explanation. But I'm going to use these rules to prove this rule. So, uh, let me just go over this. So let's say I had... Um, I don't know, 9 to the power of a half. That's going to be the same as the square root of 9, which is going to give me 3. Alright? Uh, let's say I had, I don't know, 27 
to the power, oh, let's not use 27, uh, let's just use 16, let's say. Um, well, no, no, let's use 8. 8, there we go. And I'll cube root it this time. So 8 to the power of 1 third is going to give me um, the cube root of 8, which is 2. Okay, so <clears throat> all I've done is I've transferred that into this format and then into that. Now, with the next one, let's say I had 27. 27 to the power of 2 thirds. 27 to the power of 2 thirds is a bit difficult because now my numerator over here isn't 1. So I can't straight away use either of these rules. What I can do though is I can think of this as, well that's 2 lots of 1 third. Because 1 third and 1 third gives me 2 thirds. So I've got 2 lots of them. And if you remember back um, to the indices raised to a power, what I've actually got there is I've got 27 to the power of a times b. So what I could say is, well that's 27 to the a raised to the power of b. And I'll show you what I mean. I said that that was 2 times 1 third. So let's write that as 2 times 1 third. So 27 to the power of 2 times 1 third. Or I'll write it the other way around, 1 third times 2. So I can then use that index rule to go 27 to the third times by 2. And my times by 2 in this case is just going to be raised to the power of 2. Because as I said, I can have a to the b all raised to the power of, uh, to the power of c is the same as a to the bc. <clears throat> That's the case that I've got here. Well, this is relatively easy because I can get the cube root of 27. And if you're thinking, what's the cube root? I'm just going to think of a number times a number times a number to give me 27. 3 times 3 is 9, times 3 is 27. So my answer to 27 cube rooted is going to be 3. But let's not forget that this still has to be squared. So my answer here is then going to have to be squared, which gives me 9. Now I'm not expecting to do this level of working for every single time. What you could look at this, what we'll look at here is simply that's 27 cubed. Uh, sorry, cube rooted, and the answer raised to the power of 2. All right, so you can straight away jump uh, from this step, most of you, straight to that step. All right, you should be able to do that. Let's have a look at another example. Uh, let's see if it works. <coughs> All right, so let's have 81, um, this time 81 to the power of 3 quarters. Okay, 81 to the power of 3 quarters. And in this case here, um, I've got, again, a fractional index where my numerator isn't 1, so I have to split it up. So that's 81 to the power of 1 quarter raised to the power of 3. Well, that's fine, 81 to the power of 1 quarter is the fourth root, that's how we pronounce that. The fourth root of 81 cubed. Fourth root of 81 is going to give me 3. If you couldn't, if you couldn't work that out, so the 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 should give me 81. In, at this stage, you might have a calculator to help you out with that. Um, and then, don't forget that I'm going to have to cube root that. I cube that answer. 3 times 3 is 9 times 3 is 27. There's an answer there. Okay, now I said that um, my negative indices would never come uh, by themselves. Well, what will happen sometimes is that they will give us not only a fractional index, but a negative fractional index. So if I use these exact answers or exact questions here and just make it negative, all that means is I'm just going to be chucking over 1 in there. And that's just going to be over 1. And that will then be over 1. And that will be over 1. So my answer is 1 ninth. Okay? Likewise here. That's just going to be over 1, over 1, over 1. And so my answer is 1 over 27. Um, if I do it a little bit more neatly, because I realize that might not be as clear, uh, those of you that can make sense of that, then that's great. Um, let's say I had, I don't know, 9 to the power of negative a half. I know the negative straight away is going to give me 1 over, and I just say 9 to the half. And then I can worry about 9 to the half. That becomes 1 over the cube, or sorry, the square root of 9 which is going to give me 103. OK, 
Okay, so I treat them separately. I treat the negative first, so I do the inverse of it, um, and then once I've done the inverse of it, then I can just treat this as a, as a positive index. Um, I have added in a third rule here, and that's simply if you play around with the calculator, you can see that it doesn't matter what order I do this in. It doesn't matter if I cube it first, or um, sorry, apply this, whatever, C root first, and then, and then apply the, to the power of B, or if I do to the power of B and then the C root first, it actually doesn't matter. I can write them in either order, which, uh, when we have a look at certs, will actually be quite important. Um, it's, you know, it's good to know that you can do either or. So just bear that in mind. All right, please feel free to rewind if I've been too quick, if I've gone through it too fast. Please have a, have a look at those um, and take uh, as many relevant notes as you feel you need to. All right, I hope that's helped you with uh, having a look at advanced indices. I'll see you next time. Cheers.